the amazing Mr. Malone. <laughs> Operator. Operator. Get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures... The Amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight in our study of the cliché, let's examine the familiar early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. If that's true, Jeff Lewis is destined for failure. Jeff's a good-looking boy coming home at four in the morning. It's easy to understand why he keeps the same hours as I do. He's a musician. He plays piano with Rusty Gates' band. But Jeff's not the only musician in the family. He's got a wife who can sound off, too. But, of course, her solos aren't nearly as sweet. Is that you, Jeff? Uh-huh. Thought you'd be asleep, Claire. Couldn't I sleep? You realize what time it is? Yeah, it's four o'clock. Where have you been? You got off at two. I went out for coffee with Rusty. You went out for coffee with Rusty. Yeah, that's what I said. I suppose you two were alone. Oh, look, Claire, do we have to start that? I'm tired. You're tired. Do you ever think of me sitting here till all hours of the night, worrying myself sick, wondering what's happened to you? Thinking maybe you got hit by a car? Oh, now you're being ridiculous. Where are my pajamas? Now I'm ridiculous. Yes. I don't know why you bother coming home at all. I sometimes wonder myself. Then why do you? Why don't you just say you're tired of me? Well, if you want to know, I... Oh, wait, look. Look, honey, please. Let's, let's not fight. You know how I feel about you, but every night it's the same thing over and over again. I'm... I'm sorry, Jeff. I don't mean to act like this. I just can't help myself. I love you so much I can't see straight. I love you too, honey. I don't blame you for being angry. But every time I see all those women hanging around the bandstand... They're just a bunch of jerks. I wouldn't give two cents for any one of them. You're a darling to put up with me. Come on, forget it, will you? I'll make you some coffee? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. I'll get right to work. And uh, maybe you can make a sandwich, too, huh? I thought you ate with Rusty. What? When you came in, you said you were out with him. I was. Then how come you're so hungry? All I said was, was I... Was Rita want... there, too? Rita? Oh, haven't you met Rusty's wife? Listen, Claire, I thought you... you two were old friends. After all, she's been singing with the band for three years. Now, look... Don't think you're fooling me. I know what's going on. You're out of your mind. You must have been. And I am now, not to see it before. Oh. Well, I'll say one thing for you, Mr. Lewis. You were real clever. But you're not going to get away with it, understand? I'll kill you first. Oh, that does... Jeff! Jeff, where are you going? I didn't mean it, Jeff. Honey, please. Jeff! Just a second. Give me a chance, will you? Look, you... Hi, I'm alone. What's your idea, Jeff? No. Yeah was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd just drop by. What's the matter, Claire lock you out? Not that I blame her in your condition. <laughs> You're loaded. <laughs> Ain't I, though, huh? <laughs> well, that's one case I'll never get to handle. I thought you never touch the stuff. Oh, I'm celebrating. Hey, you better sit down. I don't mind if I do. Oh. <laughs> What's the trouble? Trouble? Who's got trouble? Obviously, you have. Well, you know, you're right. Claire? Yeah. Well, I suppose it was bound to happen. What do you want me to do, start suit for divorce? What, what makes you say it was bound to happen? You forget, I've seen her in action. Every time a dame asks you to play a tune, she goes nuts. Well, she, she says she's crazy about me. I suppose she is. Well, it, why can't we make a go of it, huh? Because Claire's not happy unless she's tormenting herself. She's sick. Mm. Well, I'll draw up the papers first thing in the morning. Hey, you, you, know, you know what she said? 
she accused me of having a mad romance with Rita. Rusty's wife? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine me and Rita. <laughs> hey. I suppose we did. That would teach you. Huh? If you're thinking what I think you are, uh-huh. forget it. Rusty would break your back, and I wouldn't blame him. You let me get you a nice divorce. Uh, the only girl I ever loved and you want to see is a part. Now, look, Jeff. All Claire needs is a lesson, and she asked for it, and she's gonna get it. I tell you, you're handling this the wrong way. How would you know you were never even married? Mm-hmm. And this sort of thing vindicates my judgment. You know, you're trouble, Malone. You're a cynic. And now I'm going to prove that you're wrong. Any of you guys want to get something to eat? What about you, Jeff? You coming along? Well, I, I thought Rita and I were going to run over a couple of tunes. We were going to what? Well, don't you remember, Rita? You said you want to go over that new cold porter thing. Well, that's right, I did. Well, why don't you kids do it tomorrow, huh? Well, you know what they say, Rusty. Never put off for tomorrow who you can do today. <laughs> why don't you and the boys go to Mike's? We'll meet you. All right. You fellas ready? Yeah, let's go. What are you waiting for? We'll see you cats later. Thank you bet. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, I must be losing my mind. Uh, I'll get you, Rita. I don't remember asking you to run over any tunes with me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. I guess I misunderstood. No, you didn't. Why did you tell Rusty we were going to rehearse? Because I've been working with you for three years, and this is the first time you ever gave me a tumble. Well, if you'd uh, like to skip it... Uh... Are you kidding? Well... <laughs> well, shall we get right down to work? You know you're cute. Hmm? I was wondering if you'd ever come around. Look, uh, Rita, I, uh, I made a mistake. You see, uh, I... Did I ask for any explanations? Enough, you wanted to be alone with me. No, nah, you, you, you don't understand. I Jeff. understand that we're wasting time. We've got to meet Rusty. No, but, but I, you I, don't. I, 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 hey, we shouldn't have done that, Rita. Why does it hurt? No, but I, I, I don't if think you that. You aren't the darndest man for talking. Lucky I know a wonderful way to shut your mouth. Come here, baby. Let me show you. <laughs> Oh, listen, Claire, I told you oh, before darling, not to... please. You can't hang up on me. You don't know what I've been going through all this week ever since you, you moved out. I should have done it long ago. Maybe now you've got an idea what I've been through these past four years. Oh, Jeff, I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you. If only you'll come home. No. Jeff, please. I promise I'll never be jealous again. I know you're only seeing Rita to teach me a lesson. What makes you think so? Because you love me. Maybe I don't anymore. No. Jeff, you mustn't say that. You don't believe it yourself. Look, Claire. You've got to get this through your head. Comes a time when a guy gets fed up. I've had it, baby. And you're the one who did the job. Hey, Rita. See this in variety? Ray Herbeck's working at the Riverside Hotel in Reno. Can't hear you, Rusty. My old... What? I'll tell you later. I think we got company. Just a second. Claire. I'm sorry to bother you, Rusty. Oh, that's all right, honey. Come on in. Have you seen Jeff? Well, what do you mean? He hasn't been home in a week. I'm going out of my mind. You better sit down. You want a drink? No, no, thanks. Rusty, you got to help me. Well, look, Claire, I, I don't like to interfere in somebody else's but business. But this is I... your business. It never would have happened if it hadn't been for Rita. What? She turned him against me. You're nuts. Look, maybe she can fool you, but she can't fool me. I knew she was after him the minute I saw him. If you don't believe me, just... What's going on here? There she is. Ask her. Ask me what? Don't play innocent, Rita. It's out of character. All right, Claire, I think you better go. You don't believe me. How can you be so blind? Can't you see? She's nothing but a no Shut good. Up. Oh. Get out of here before I throw you out. Why don't you ask about the other boys in the band? 
Why do you think Hank's wife made him leave? She was running after him. That's a lie. That's why you picked on Jeff. But he doesn't love you. He couldn't. Listen, you, the day I couldn't take... Go on, Rita. The day you couldn't take what? Honey, what's the matter with you? Are you going to listen to a crazy dame? Who are you calling crazy? I don't know about you, Rusty, but I don't have to put up with you. You see? All right, Claire, all right. You said your piece. Now, just clear out. Not until no, I... I've heard enough. Come on. Let go of me. Let me go. I'll let you go when you're outside. No. Yes. Let go of me. That girl's insane. That's possible. Now, what is this about you and Jeff? You're not going to believe her. Not if you can convince me she's wrong. Rusty, I swear there's nothing to I it. I wonder. Barney made a remark about you last night, about your rehearsing all the time. Well, if you don't want me to approve Look, how come so suddenly you're interested, huh? You never cared before. Look, maybe it's time we did a little work together, huh? All right, Rita, you start singing. And you better make it good. <laughs> Desk. Yes, sir. This is Jeff Lewis from 419. Oh, yes, Mr. Lewis. I called for a bellboy 20 minutes ago. What happened to him? Oh, he's probably on his way up, sir. How's he coming? By way of Cicero? Please see if you can... Oh, never mind. He's here now. Just a second. I said just a second. You take a year and then... But... What are you doing here? <laughs> no, you shouldn't have... <laughs> You tell it, what do you want? Well, I... Hey, wait a minute, Counselor. How'd you know it was me? Well, I've been answering my phone this way all week. The law of averages said I'd be right once. Oh, you're amazing, Mr. Malone. That's what I keep telling you. What are you doing? Well, what else would I be doing at four in the morning? Oh, what I know about you. Don't be so funny. I assume you have a reason for disturbing me at this hour. You assume properly. Look, how soon can you get down to headquarters? Why, what's up? You know Jeff Lewis? Oh, very well. What'd he get himself into? The morgue. What are you babbling about? He was knocked off at 2.30 this morning. Who did it? Well, we kind of suspicion it was his wife, but naturally you're going to prove we're wrong. Did Claire ask you to phone me? You don't think I'd waste the taxpayer's money on a call of my own? Come on down, Malone. Your public's waiting. You are listening to the amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. For mystery adventure fans, there's more first-rate radio listening Sunday with The Saint and Dimension X. Tom Conway stars as that debonair gentleman adventurer, Simon Templer, better known to the underworld as The Saint, who never eases his campaign against crime. Then later, Dimension X brings you the tales in the future tense. This week's feature, Pebble in the Sky. Written for radio by Ernest Canoy. It tells the story of time when the civilization of the galaxy spreads across 200 million worlds, when the black void of space swarms with ships of interstellar commerce. But far off the trade routes, almost forgotten, lies the dying planet Earth in the backwater of the universe, a place of exile, a pebble in the sky. Sunday, on this station. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Like the man says, that's life for you. One minute you got it, and the next minute you ain't. Jeff Lewis found that out the hard way. Half hour after I got the news, I was on my way to headquarters. And when I walked in, I was greeted by Lieutenant Brooks with the most original line of the year. Well, if it ain't the amazing Mr. Malone. You know something, Lieutenant? You could stand some new material. Yeah, but where am I going to find a writer on my salary? Where's Claire Lewis? You want to see her now? What do you think I came down here for? Well, I kind of hoped it was me. Stutzman, get Claire Lewis. Right What's the matter with him? He didn't even say hello. Well, he didn't recognize you with that briefcase under your arm. What do you got near your laundry? Excuse me. The sergeant... Oh, come on in, Claire. Malone. You came... Uh-huh. Sit down. They tell you about Jeff? Uh-huh. He's dead, Malone. Jeff's dead. I know. 
I don't want to live anymore. You're talking like a fool. I don't want to live without him. Why'd you send for Malone? Well... Well, he's got a point there, lover. Now, either you want me to get you off... I don't know what I want. Who do you think killed him? Rita. Rita Gates? Yeah. She did it, Malone. Why should she? Because she... She knew he didn't care for her. He was just using Rita to get back at me. Did Jeff tell you that? He didn't have to. When was the last time you saw him? Uh, I, I don't remember. I can tell you. It was at 2.30 this morning. He went to his hotel when he opened the no, door. No, 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 no. That's not true. I love Jeff. Why don't you lay off her, Sidney? Can't you see what she's gone through? Oh, use your head, Malone. She killed him as sure as you're standing. No, there. no. All right, Lieutenant. You made a lot of accusations, but where's your evidence? We'll produce it at the trial. Then you haven't any yet, huh? Have you any? She didn't. No, I guess we're all on the same boat, and it's up to me to find a paddle. All right, Claire, take care of yourself. I'll be seeing you real soon. Hello, Rita. Why, Malone. Can I come in? Well, Rusty's not here. It's all the better. I never believed it's so nice to have a man around the house. <laughs> You're not the one. Ain't I, though? Uh. Let me take your coat. Oh, bother. It's fine. No, I should be mad at you. What on earth for? You haven't been over at the club to hear me sing in months. Oh, I'll never forgive myself. Would you feel better if I slashed my wrist? <laughs> You're cute. You ought to see me in my confirmation suit. <laughs> I look like a doll in it. Too bad I got to break it in at Jeff's <laughs> funeral. Oh, do we have to talk about him? What would you sooner talk about? Us. And then we have to come back to Jeff. I don't like to start a campaign with my last rival still warm in the morgue. What's that supposed to mean? Well, it occurred to me maybe you killed him. Are you crazy? You know, when you found out he was playing you for a sucker. He played me for a sucker? Yeah, it was an idea he got one night in my apartment. You're lying. He wanted to give Claire something really to worry about. I tried to tout him off. Get out. What's the matter? Don't you think I'm cute anymore? You better get out of here. Now, Rita, don't you dare throw that... Uh, hey, you missed me. I'll show you. Uh, don't bother, lover. I'm convinced a girl like you couldn't miss twice. Maybe I'll give you another chance later. Who's there? It's only me, Rita. Oh, Rusty, I'm so glad you're home. I am. Yeah, I had a miserable afternoon. How'd the rehearsal go? Real bad. Boys are all sick about Jeff. Yeah, I guess it'll be tough breaking in a new piano player. Is that all you can think of? Oh, now, Rusty, I explained that. Claire was imagining things. Jeff didn't mean a thing to me. Mm -hmm. What was Malone doing here? Huh? Malone, the lawyer. Oh, oh, he's representing Claire. He thought maybe I could help her out. Mm -hmm. What'd you tell him? What could I tell him? Maybe about you and Jeff having a deal. Oh, you're getting as bad as she Look, is. Look, if you mean I'm jealous, you're right. Only I got a good reason. Look, Rusty, we've been all through this mm -hmm. before. Sure we have, and you convinced me Claire was nuts. Yeah, you really talked me out of it. <sighs> but since then, honey, I've been doing a little checking. Well, you've got your nerve. You know, I'm crazy about you, Rita. But you're no good. What? Everybody knows it. Don't you talk to me like that. Well, who's got a better right? But you know what's funny? It doesn't make any difference. I don't care what you did. I still feel the same way about you. Well, I'm overwhelmed. Now, I want to know what Malone said. None of your business. Yes, it is, baby. And I'm going to find out if I have to shake it out of you. No, Rusty. No. Rusty. It was just one of those things, just one of those crazy things. One of those bells that now and then rings. A little flat there, Malone. Just. Now, look, Rusty, I can go along with a gag, but this is too much. You know, this is the third week in a row I've walked in here and found the joint occupied. You better get a new lock. It's an idea. What do you want? I just finished having a little talk with Rita. Now I suppose it's my turn. Mm hmm What'd you say to her? Didn't Rita tell you? Maybe I want to compare notes. You don't have to worry, Rusty. This was purely business. Is it about Jeff Lewis? Yeah. Yeah. She was telling the truth. 
You're trying to frame her for his murder. I don't have to frame her. Alone, if you involve Rita in this, I'll kill you. I mean that. I believe you do. Her name is not to be mentioned at Claire's trial. Do you understand me? I don't see how we're going to keep it out. I'm warning you. You bring her in and I'll break every bone in your body. Even my little pinky. What's the matter? Don't you think I can? You're taking in a lot of territory. According to the encyclopedia, there are hundreds of bones in the human frame. And if you think I'm... Oh, wait a minute. You wouldn't hit a man who was yellow, would you? I'll show you. You're pushing me to... Hold it, Rusty. Why can't we be friends just to prove I've got no hard feelings? Get away from that I just want to get this bottle. Maybe we can split it. Together. Well, that's opening it the hard way, but you'll have to forgive me, friend. I forgot my corkscrew. Yo-ho, is anybody home? Oh, no. What did I do to deserve this? Nothing. That's why you should be grateful. Look, Lieutenant, I want to talk to you. Must you? Yeah, but first, how about shutting off that teletype? Are you out of your mind? I'm expecting a very important flash. The score of the White Sox game will be through any minute. Well, if you won't do it... You know, that's what I like. I like to see a man make himself at home. Where's Claire Lewis? You know, Tom, where is she? Is. Well, you got to let her go. Oh, I suppose you can prove she's innocent. Yes, I got it all figured out. I'm telling you, Brooks, you bring her to court and I'll crucify you. You haven't even established a motive for the girl. Are you kidding? Claire was crazy about Jeff and she lost. No, she didn't. Jeff was only seeing Rita to needle her. Look, look, Malone, I got work to do now. Now, why don't you go home? I can't. Home ain't a fit place for me right now. You know who's there? All right, I'll play straight. Who's there, Mr. Malone? Jeff Lewis is killer. No. I'm serious, Lieutenant. It's Rusty Gates. What's he doing at your place? Right now, I imagine he's dozing. I put him to sleep with a bottle. What are you talking about? I had to conk him. Why? Well, it was either him or me, and naturally, I was prejudiced. Did he have a gun? No. Well, why didn't you use your fist? Are you kidding? Rusty must weigh 240 pounds. So? So he would have murdered me. That's no excuse. Look, Lieutenant, quit the kibitz, and I tell you, he killed Jeff. Why? He thought Jeff was breaking up his happy home. Oh, you make it sound very convincing. Thanks. I said it sounded convincing. Actually, it ain't. What are you babbling about now? Jeff was killed at 2.30 at the Hillcrest Hotel. So? So, at 2.30... Rusty was doing a benefit on the North Shore where he was seen by 80,000 citizens. Well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's right. Now, how can one man be in two places at the same time? Unless he's amazing. And you're the only one who reads that, Billy. Well, it's been Grand Malone. Drop by again when you can't stay so long. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. In this great year of decision, the armed forces of the United States offer a greater challenge to the young men of America than ever before. It's a vital, exciting challenge to anyone interested in his personal welfare, the welfare of his nation, or the welfare of the world. Service in today's modern armed forces means a career, a career in which any man can take pride and satisfaction. The new training program prepares the serviceman not only for advancement and leadership in the armed forces themselves, but for positions of responsibility in civilian life. A career in the armed forces means education and technical training in the world's best technical schools. Yes, today's volunteer serviceman has opportunities never offered before. That's why alert, intelligent young men all over the country are entering the armed forces every day. The standards are high and not everyone can qualify. You must have the brains, the ability, and the character to become a leader. But if you can qualify, go to your nearest recruiting office for full information. Here again is the amazing Mr. Malone. Well, there was no use denying Malone had done it again. Here I'd worked out so neatly why Rusty Gates had to be the killer and Lieutenant Brooks had to knock it out of my head. You'd think he had a grudge against me the way he kept ruining my theories. <laughs> Actually, Brooks is crazy for me. He just hides it so well he even fools himself. You know your trouble, Malone. You get emotionally involved with the clients you represent. Now, why can't you be like the other lawyers in town? Why should I? You ever hear their names on the radio? Now, look, I thought you were going to talk sense. You wouldn't understand me if I did. Now, listen, Sidney, are you positive that Rusty was at that benefit? Absolutely. What'd he do? He led the band. What'd you think? And how come Jeff Lewis wasn't there? He wasn't feeling good, so they used his sub. When did the band go on? At a quarter after two. Well, suppose Rusty got off the stand for a while. Uh-uh. Not a chance. Besides, he never could make it to the Hillcrest. It would take him at least 45 minutes to cut across town. Well, he must have worked it somehow. Now, how could one man be in two places at the same time? Hey, I asked you that. You know something, Lieutenant? I got the solution. Oh, no, not again. I mean it. Don't you see the answer? No. Well, 
Can we get all our suspects together? Who do you mean? Rita and Rusty. What about Claire? Oh, of course. We'll need her, too. We don't want to play to a house that's only two-thirds full. Well, get on with it, Lieutenant. I'm ready to give the downbeats. <laughs> You want me, Mrs. Gates? Yeah. How long do you intend to keep us here? Till I get orders, contrary-wise. Well, my husband's sick. He needs medical attention. Can't you see he's got a cut on his hand? Oh, I'm all right, Rita. No, you're just trying to be brave. It's very bad, sweetie. No. You picked a fine time to start worrying just about keep him. Keep out of this, Claire. She killed my husband and you asked me to keep out? Oh, you're really crazy. I'll show you who's crazy. Hey, Rusty, help! Oh, come on, I'll Claire. Kill I'll cut it out. Now, now, ladies, what will the police think? Better open up, Lieutenant, before we here. have a bloodbath. All right, you two, that's enough. Let me go. I said that's enough. Now, behave yourself. She started it. If I ever get my hands on you... Are you going to behave? I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Is it safe for me to come in? Oh, don't worry, Cuts. Let the girls won't hurt you. I was thinking of Rusty. Oh, forget it, Malone. I had it coming. Oh, it's very charitable of you. What's the idea, Malone? It's a very good question, Rita. Fortunately, I'm prepared with an answer. We're trying to solve the murder of Jeff Lewis. She did it. That's what I thought for a while, Claire, but I had to discard that theory. The truth of the matter is, Jeff didn't mean enough to her. As far as Rita was concerned, he was just another guy. Oh, you know... Now, I love her. That's no way to talk to a man who just gave you a clean bill of health. Well, if she didn't kill him, who did? You're leaving yourself wide open there, Claire. What? Yeah. You did it. No! No, that's not true. I'm afraid it is. I'll kill you for this. Me too? Hmm. I just don't understand you women. Here you claim you couldn't live without Jeff. And when I arrange for you to join him, you complain. Well, I guess there's no pleasing some people. I just can't get over it. There's something bothering you, little man. Yeah, yeah. How you can have the colossal nerve to sit there and eat after lousing this whole case up. That's gratitude for you, and after all the work I did. After all the work you did? What do you think clinched your case against Claire? Don't you know without me you'd have never gotten a conviction? What do you eat that gives you so much gall? I'm perfectly serious. Why any decent lawyer could have gone into court and gotten an acquittal? All he would have had to do is cast a reasonable doubt on your evidence. I ended that doubt once and for all. Well, I don't see how. By taking care of all the other suspects, I proved Rusty couldn't have killed Jeff. You proved? With a little assistance from you. Uh, but the unknown factor in the case was Rita. I knew she wasn't guilty. Uh, and how did you know that? Because when I went up to see her this afternoon, she convinced me Jeff meant nothing to her by making a play for me. And no woman who's lost a great love would have done that. Aren't you forgetting your charm? Now, what are you so bitter about? Here I demonstrate to the public that their police force is on the job day and night. And despite all the propaganda to the contrary, the cops are right once in a while. Jade, thanks. And what do I get out of it? Two women in the case, and I wind up in a night spot with you. Well, don't feel too badly, Counselor. I've got a feeling before this evening's over, you're going to wind up with something else. Yeah? What? The check. Good night, my lord. story of the boy who worked out a scheme to convert common metals into precious ones? It paid off in reverse. For two ounces of gold, he got one of lead. I'll tell you all about it next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone, with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a famous character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Straight from the pages of the Saturday Evening Post comes that famous Oriental detective, Mr. Moto. Created by John P. Marquand, Mr. Moto stars James Monks in the title role Sunday on NBC. Fred Collins speaking. The amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. 
Stay tuned for The Man Called X, next over most NBC stations.